Sage Minds, Micah Frankel with Chris Brown, hoping he's going to be in action at LFA 71. He's hoping. <laughs> All right, so it's the last time we saw you fight. The last time you actually got in the cage or in action was here at his letter, right? November 30th or something like that. And since then, you've been scheduled officially three times, right? No, officially four times this year. Because I was supposed to be on the original Warrior Wednesday, and so but some bullshit happened, and they pulled me from the card because two other guys didn't want to fight me. They, one of the guys still ended up fighting. Um, can't remember the guy's name, but uh, he ended up fighting. Uh, but they pulled me from the card and then apologized and were like, oh yeah, we're gonna make it up to you. Headline, they're gonna be on the next one. Ended up headlining the next one. I actually fly out there this time. The first time it got canceled, I didn't have to fly. So the second time I flew out to Detroit, fight got canceled because the guy didn't have his medicals. And they canceled the whole card because three other guys didn't have their medicals. So they were like, oh, do you want to take a break since you just cut weight? I was like, no, I'm coming back next month. Let's do it next month. So they scheduled the fight with Darren Crookshank. So I come back the next month, do another cut. I come back out there. Um, Long story short, I was over by one pound at the official weigh-ins. You can check the official weigh-in sheet. I'm 157. Wait, you're sure it was just one pound? Because I've heard rumors that yes. you were like a hundred. No, it's four, <laughs> five, six oh, yeah. pounds off, not a hundred. Yes. I showed up. I was like five pounds over. But I called them before to let them know that the scale at the LA Fitness there in Detroit was off. And I had left my personal scale at the hotel room. So... The, whole, the LA Fitness scale said I was on weight. So I went back to the room and found out that I wasn't on weight. So I called the promoters like, hey, I'm a couple pounds over. They were like, oh, no problem. Just come down here, we'll give you two hours to cut. So I said, cool. So I show up, I was like, oh yeah, you're over. I was like, yeah, let me go cut. So I go cut the weight. And the whole time I'm cutting weight, they're blowing my phone up. Oh, Darren doesn't want to wait. They're not want to wait. They don't want to wait. But they waited for when their guy was all off weight. They waited for their dude being late or whatever. But me being cutting weight, they had an issue with it, right? So I didn't even get the full two hours from the time that I showed up for whatever. So I show up. I'm 157. He's like, oh, this is boys. Like, well, he didn't even say it. His wife and his manager, he was quiet the whole time, just sitting there in his fucking hoodie. And then, so they're making a big old scene, like, oh, this is unprofessional, this is bullshit, we're scheduled to fight at 156. I'm like, it's one pound, we'll give you the fucking uh, percentage. Uh, the promoter was gonna give him more money on top of that. And they were like, oh no, it's not about the money, we're professionals, and I was like, you missed weight in the UFC, so don't come at me with, oh, you've never missed weight before, so let's be real. So he was like, well, I'll only fight you if you come back at 160 tomorrow. So Coach Wink didn't want me to do it because he's like, that's a bullshit recovery. So, but, you know, the person I am, I was like, fuck that. I'm showing up at 160 and I'm going to whoop that ass. So I show up the next day. Uh, I cut another eight pounds the next day because they wanted me to just dehydrate, like go without eating or anything. I drank water, I rehydrated, ate a little bit, and then I cut another eight pounds. I cut 11 the first day, and then another eight the next day. Showed up, he was like, oh, if you don't come at five o'clock uh, before the fights, I won't fight you at 160. I showed about 160, the promoter, I'm on the scale, the promoter shakes my hand and goes and gets him. He comes back and sees me on the scale and was like, oh, oh, I'm not fighting. I got rid of that deal a long time ago. Didn't tell anybody he got rid of this deal. Everyone pointed out that he brought his fight back to the gym or to the uh, event, had his fight back over there with his team, saw me and was like, oh, 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 I I'm not fighting. I got rid of that deal. And he's like, I told you to be here at 5 o'clock. It's 5.10. And Wink is like, so you should be happy he has less time to recover. And he's like, uh, 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 no, 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 I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fight. So then he goes into the crowd and starts trying to tell people I was seven pounds over. So one of the coaches from Michigan came over there and was like, hey, you need to make a post because he's lying out here. So just to clear that up, he's a little bitch and pulled out over one pound. <laughs> And then you got another fight scheduled. So B3 yes, fights, B3. Right? So next, I shoot out to Memphis last month, and weighed in. Guy didn't show up to weigh-ins. Uh, so after that, that night, 
he was supposedly still on his way. So uh, I messaged the uh, promoter. He didn't message me back until the next morning. Uh, so the next morning I wake up and I see Wink text me talking about, hey, I, I was on the flight and Rick, my manager, called him and said, get off the flight. So uh, he's like, it's over. I'm like, what? So I call the promoter and he said the guy gave him three excuses. First excuse was um, he hurt himself <laughs> randomly. He hurt himself the fight week. Uh, and then and then he said that he couldn't have find a vehicle to drive from St. Louis to Memphis. Oh, that's a tough one. And then that's not even a far. <laughs> that's like like rental car, <laughs> like anything. Uber it, man. You ain't got you ain't got no friends or family <laughs> like that supports you. <laughs> but uh, anyway, and then the third excuse was that he never told his coaches about the fight, and they say he shouldn't fight. So. I just got that whole ring of bullshit, so uh, those are the four fights I had scheduled and canceled this year, and that's just the people who actually agreed, not counting the people who turned down the fight. Or the we cards even, that we tried yeah, to get you on. Or the cards, yes, that other places have tried to get me that these guys will not fight me. You know, this is the first time LFA's been able to match me in 10 cities. Like, they've been trying to match me since last summer, and you see how many events they put on and how many cities they go to. And they tried to at least 10 cities they've tried that nobody will fight me. So this is the first time that they saw I got someone to sign a contract. And Yemi, and Wally, do we send him a fruit basket, a thank you? Do you send him a thank you by now? Like, like you can't even mean to be mean towards uh, him. In, the, in, the the in the questionnaire, they asked about, like, what do you have to say about your opponent? I was like, I'm just thankful he's showing up. Like, well, hopefully that he shows up. But uh, I believe that he actually will. Because uh, um, he's kind of a cocky guy from his fights. You're like, uh, I don't know why, but <laughs> that's the impression that you feel. <laughs> yeah, because he's like one of those guys. He's like always like trying to showboat and be like uh, trying to be a showman or whatever. But he don't really be doing nothing. <laughs> like to do it. Five fight win streak for Yemi. He's coming off of a win over a UFC Ultimate Fighter vet, Clay Harvison. He's got momentum. He's from Georgia. You're, you're the on the road guy. You have the more recent. Hey, my dad's you're from Georgia. Underdog. My family's from Georgia. Hey, your <laughs> I got, dude. If we really travel back, you're really sure, man. That'd be real. Like my, my dad is from Atlanta. So my grandma and everybody's all out there. So you will so, have yeah, some oh, yeah. So my, my mom and everybody's coming out. So yeah, I'll have a lot of family out there. Uh, so uh, yeah, I know he's on his little five fight win streak. Like I caught, uh, I watched his fights. Um, have you seen his fights? <laughs> well, I started watching a little bit, but not, not didn't get too far. Started watching yeah, the interview. Wanted to hear what he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, because his, his fights are pretty boring. <laughs> Talked about he likes to be a striker, and that guys take him to the ground. Yeah, was, have you seen? It's like I was like, <laughs> like a I lot guess you have more. A like a, of <laughs> he's always getting like yeah, he wants to strike like, but he's not a particularly great striker like it's, it's pretty basic striking uh, horrible wrestling defense <laughs> like everybody takes him down like and then the guys he's fighting is like first guy he, his first fight he lost he got out wrestled second fight he barely won like if he wouldn't have choked that dude if the dude went to gas at the very end in his pro debut he, if he wouldn't have gassed at the end he would have won that fight because he was getting outstriked by a guy who's four and three as an amateur He's getting outstriked. He fought one of my manager's guys, making his, uh, it was his second pro fight. Um, got out wrestled and somehow won a decision, like a bullshit decision. Like, like me and Greg watched the fight and he didn't do anything the first two rounds, but like he somehow won the fight. So we were like, okay. <laughs> um, so to say you're coming in confident. Oh, you, uh, there's a reason people don't want to fight me. <laughs> and I and so my confidence is just going growing higher. Uh, my skill levels just been growing higher. My conditioning is the highest best it's ever been. Like I just been grinding. Like I've been in training camp since November. Like I just keep rolling on to the next one. All this guy pulls out. I'll take a couple of days off and I'm right back in the gym. So it's like, I haven't stopped grinding. And I'm just sitting here, you know, putting this work in. Um, I've got to show that there's a different level. Like, I already know he can't out-wrestle me. Like, we know that. <laughs> so, and I'm about to show him that our, my striking is on a whole different level.
How much motivation is everything since November? Man, everything. Like every time someone pulls out, it's motivation. Like the next person's gonna get it, and then the next person. So it's just reloaded. So it's just loading, 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 loading. Like I'm ready to unload this clip. <laughs> And how does Breezy make the debut, make the impact, let the world know who he is as he's getting this showcase oh, on yeah. Access gotta TV? Oh yeah, got to go in there and get this finish. Like, that is my main goal, is to go here and get a finish. Like, uh, it's definitely possible, it's, it's there. Uh, it's just a matter of time before, you know, you guys really start seeing the things that I'm capable of. And I, this time has really gave me a lot of time to focus. Uh, slow things down because I used to rush a lot. If you know, <laughs> I'm no, I'm known I get a little antsy because it takes so long. You know, I usually average at least six months before I get to fight every time I fight. You know, so it's like when I finally get in there, I just be like, oh, let's go, let's go. So you know, I had to just learn to take a step back and just calm down and like I am in the gym and take my time and you know, and process everything and you'll see. Uh, a whole lot different. <laughs> Traveling out there to Atlanta. Yes, you can, try man. to fight in Detroit. You try to fight Tennessee. Hopefully make it happen in Georgia. Right? Yes. I was like, yeah. Um, hopefully the fight goes through. But, you know, um, I'm optimistic. Like, even if it doesn't, if he pulls out for whatever reason, at least I get to see my granny. Like, I get to go spend some time with my family. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Hopefully it shows up, like you know, especially in your in your home st city, like your home state. Like you want to come and show out. Don't want to do that bitch shit, like Darren, like like in your home city, like in your hometown. You pull out of a fight for one pound, like any, they can dispute it and lie all they want, but the official weigh-in says I was 157. Yes, I was a little high when I showed up, but I was allowed my cut time, just like every other promotion. You have time to go cut. And I wasn't even given my full two hours, and I was still only one pound over, and he still wouldn't take the fight. Like, how many real fighters turn down the fight for one pound? Like, who turns down a fight over one pound? People fighting people five pounds over, like, the, like Yimmy. Yimmy's never made weight. The dude I'm fighting has never made weight. How much concern does that give you? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, just show, just show up. Like, that's all I care. I don't, you don't make care. Are you I'm sure? really going to be on point. I'm going to be on point. I'll tell you, the only reason I missed weight that last time is I made a mistake by not taking my personal scale with me to to go cut weight. That like that was to be with you like I guess yeah. the mouthpiece and the Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, it's got to be right there on my back, you know. You know, I, I was out there cutting weight by myself like cuz Wink didn't come till the next day, you know. So, I went out to Detroit by myself and was cutting weight and doing everything by my weight myself. So, you know, it's quite easy to forget things when you know you're trying to do all of these things and get everything settled, um, you know, to get ready for the fights. How excited are you to fight? Oh man, I'm so excited. National television, I get to put on a great show. You know I can't wait to perform. <laughs>